Well, Lindsey Graham goes on TV after dinner, and presumably whatever he drinks and has with dinner, there's a very good chance he's going to cry. You need to help this man, Donald J. Trump. They're trying to drain him dry. He spent more money on lawyers than most people spend on campaigns. They're trying to bleed him dry. DonaldJTrump.com. Go tonight. Give the president some money to fight this bullshit. I'm sorry I'm so upset, but please help President Trump. If you can fi afford five or ten bucks, if you can't afford a dollar, fine. Just pray. Lindsey Graham is crying and begging for money for a man who said this when he began running for president against Lindsey Graham and other Republicans. I don't need anybody's money. I'm using my own money. I'm not using the lobbyists. I'm not using donors. I don't care. That was a foundational lie of the Trump political career. Trump claimed to be so rich that he would never need any contributions at all, and therefore he would be incorruptible. And now Donald Trump is the most corrupt president in history, and he has taken more money out of the pockets of his supporters than any other president in history after first telling his supporters he didn't need their money. That's the person Lindsey Graham is crying for now. Lindsey Graham has never cried for a single child who has been murdered in a classroom in America. Not one. Lindsey Graham did not go on TV to cry for nine-year-old Evelyn Dykhouse, nine-year-old William Kinney, nine-year-old Allie Scruggs, who were murdered in a Nashville elementary school last week by a mass murderer who also killed Catherine Kuntz, the head of the school, Cynthia Peek, a substitute teacher, and Mike Hill, the school's custodian. Lindsey Graham did not shed a single tear for any one of those victims of America's latest mass murderer who used an AR-15 to fire 152 bullets in that school. After that mass murder, Lindsey Graham proudly told reporters in Washington that he owns an AR-15. He didn't say why. He didn't cry while casually talking to Washington reporters in the Senate hallway about America's latest mass murder, and he won't cry the next time. If your child's body is ripped apart by an AR-15 in your child's classroom, Lindsey Graham will not cry for your child, and he will not cry for you. He cried for one of Donald Trump's nominees to the United States Supreme Court when that nominee had an uncomfortable day in a Senate confirmation hearing. Lindsey Graham cried for him. Lindsey Graham got hysterical for him. And when that Supreme Court justice, for the first time in the history of the Supreme Court, voted to revoke a constitutional right from the women of this country and forced a 10-year-old pregnant girl to leave her state of Ohio to obtain urgently needed abortion services, Lindsey Graham did not cry. Lindsey Graham didn't cry about the rape of that 10-year-old girl, and he did not cry about what was forced upon her after the rape by the Supreme Court that Lindsey Graham voted into place. Professional Republicans absolutely do not cry for dead American children when they are murdered by AR-15s. Here is Tennessee Republican State Representative William Lamberth speaking to student protesters in Nashville who have spontaneously been demonstrating at the state capitol in the aftermath of the latest mass murder there. So you're not gonna like my answer. And look, I'm gonna say that straight up. It's not about this one gun. If there is a firearm out there that you're comfortable being shot with, please show me which one it is. There's not. Every, there's not, there's not, right there. Every single gun in the hands of a crazy person, a deranged person, a convicted felon, every single weapon out there can be. Wait, you're gonna be more scared when somebody's walking on the street with a giant ass gun for no reason. Like, nobody's going to do good with that gun. I understand that. The goal is not to get but it's not, you could ban that specific gun, and you were going to do almost nothing to improve y'all's safety. That's I'm sorry, that's a fact. What you I'm sorry, that's not a fact. The Washington Post has been reporting extensively on the unique damage to the human body done by AR-15s, which produce exit wounds much larger than the entrance wound of the bullet, because the bullet is designed 
to pass through the body in a way that expands the size of the wound and the damage as the bullet passes through the body. An emergency room doctor in Uvalde, Texas, described how unrecognizable some of the dead children were there because of what an AR-15 did to them. Some of the children had to be identified only by their clothing. Children in classrooms in America have literally had their heads blown off by AR-15s. So yes, the AR-15 does make a difference. Banning the sale of AR-15s would make a difference. Some children might have survived some of the gunshot wounds they suffered in schools around the country if the shooter had a less powerful gun. 152 bullets were fired from that AR-15 in that Nashville school last week, 152. A weapon not designed for war and for mass murder, as the AR-15 was, might only have allowed that shooter to get off a few dozen shots, maybe half as many shots. We don't know. We do know that 400 Texas police officers were afraid to enter a classroom where children were dying for 77 minutes because they were afraid of the AR-15 inside that classroom. What Republican State Representative William Lamberth and Lindsey Graham have in common with every other elected Republican in Washington is the absolute determination to make sure that every mass murderer who walks into an American school will be able to legally purchase an AR-15 to bring into that school with them. Elected Republicans are dedicated to making sure that America's mass murderers are the very best equipped mass murderers in the world.